Could get more clear. Sleeping, please do not disturb <laughs> or knock, Tom. <laughs> Can't get more clear than that. <laughs> Hey guys, it's Matthew and Grace here from Jamie.Musical, the Instagram fan account for everybody's talking about Jamie. Today, we're joined by Leighton Williams. Hi. Thank you for having us, Leighton. No worries, my pleasure. Leighton has been in Jamie since January, so we're just going to ask him a few questions about himself and his experiences whilst being in Jamie. So, Hi. what were you most apprehensive about before taking on the role as Jamie New? Ooh, I did actually half read this question, but I was like, do you know what, I'm not going to read them because like, my replies to be natural. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm thinking, um, I guess I was apprehensive because the show's been such a hit, mm -hmm. um, that coming into a role that's already had so much success, success um, is quite nerve-wracking. Secondly, I'm stepping into the shoes, you know, of my best friend, so like, that was also a bit nerve-wracking because I respect everything that he done, but obviously I want to do my own spin on it. Um, and yeah, just, I guess I kind of like talk the talk a little bit in life. So like, you have to come through with the receipts, right? Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? I talk like this cause I can back it up. <laughs> and I needed to be able to back it up. But at that point, I didn't know whether I could back it up because mm -hmm. this is a gig, like it's hard. Lots of songs, lots of this, lots of that. So I was just nervous that I wasn't going to do myself proud and do it justice. And I hope that I have. <laughs> you definitely have. <laughs> you mentioned about um, putting your own spin on the role. Mm -hmm. Was there anything, were you given leeway in the rehearsal process to be able to put your own? Um, yeah, 100%. It wasn't really JB, Jonathan, the the director, he definitely let us just go with what we wanted. That's the worry about doing a show that has already been established, like just for example, like Wicked and things like that. Some shows you go and you have to stand on that dot, you have to say it like that because that's just how the ship mm. has been sailing. However, this show was that when we got into the rehearsal room, just see how the, see how the, go, it literally was like, go. Like me and um, Sabrina would just start doing the scene and we'd walk where we wanted to, we'd sit where we wanted to. So I'm not sure how different you guys see that it is from, from what we did to the original casting, but we really just, just made it yeah. for ourselves and then if it wasn't working and we're literally completely at the other end of the stage we're like guys you need to be in the spotlight eventually but yeah we just kind of felt it for ourselves and it was kind of a green light which is the best so yeah we had a free we kind of had a free um reign to kind of do what we wanted to do in you know um and that was a great creative experience yeah I think it's really good to see like the differences, even though obviously it's your take and then it's John's take as well, but it's good to see yeah. the differences, make it your own. I actually would like, it's, I'd quite like to see now how different it was, I've not even seen the movie, because I didn't, once I'd know that I got the part, I didn't want to see the show again, because yeah. I, I didn't want to be like, oh, I remember that, that was funny, I didn't want to see what was going on, because I wanted it to be my my jokes, my banner, my isms, you know? So it would be quite interesting, maybe I'll watch once I'm done. <laughs> there are probably things that naturally have just fallen into the way they yeah. were. We do the same, yeah. Me and John did an interview together the other week, which will be coming out soon. Um, <laughs> all these things, all these exclusive <laughs> Friday, is an exclusive today, isn't it? All the gas. Um, but yeah, and we was talking about it, and even he said, which he'd never said, said to me before, he said, you know, some of the um, characteristics and some of the things that he set his journey on were were from me, like yeah. later in mm -hmm. his friend, and I was like, oh my god, I didn't know that, and I thought that was really cute. Oh. So, yeah. So obviously you're a very busy person. Oh, books and busy, running around these streets, having bits <laughs> and bobs. <laughs> so how do you balance obviously performing eight times a week, mm -hmm. and then you teach dance classes, mm -hmm. and you run your own business as well, and have a social life? Mm -hmm. How do you balance that? Do you know what? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's been it's been all right. Like the thing with me is I, I've always been someone that just keeps busy. I, I lounge around in the day and then come here. I would feel like such a sloth that by the time I get to do the show, I'm like, there's a clock on the wall. <laughs> like I'm up. We've got my Spanish classes. You know, I'm going to see my friends. I'll be doing this. I have to put in my office hours for personal shows. It's just always been a part of my brand as such, just to keep busy, to stay, you know, inspired. Whether it be, you know, doing workshops, that kind of gives me energy like when I teach the workshops and I see how much fun they're having it kind of like you know makes me inspired so I go into work and I'm like on fire like it's amazing I try not to exude myself too much of course um but that's why I have a chore in the vineyard yeah. and my assistants and people that can come and help in also take on some of the um weight of that um and I guess yeah it's just it's just been something that I've always I've always been busy and I've always you know been if this is my time so I'm not going to be sat at home. Flightman to the flight floor, please. Flightman to the flight floor. Rude. <laughs> and at all. <laughs> <laughs> 
but I guess that's probably how you've got to where you are. By, you know, putting in all the hard work, you wouldn't be here without all of that. Do you know what? It is. Some people just, uh, them people that just sit and they chill and some things come to them, but I'm very much so like, a, a, I'm a chaser a little bit. I should probably take my foot off the gas a little and relax. <laughs> I can count on one hand the amount of times I've just stayed at home until four or five o'clock and just come into warm up. Like, mm -hmm. I don't really do that. Now that I've got a bay, I like to lounge around a little bit more. Ow! <laughs> uh, right, uh, what is the biggest challenge you've faced so far in this job? Um, the biggest challenge has been sustaining just being able to do the show. So, at, f at first when I started, I wasn't running around the streets as much, of course. I was com committed on just doing the show, but you really... Uh, I didn't realise how much energy it would take for me to be able to do this emotional roller coaster eight times a week. Yeah. Like it's really like a lot. Like on the Sundays, I'm on full voice for us. Like for the first like month or so, I didn't even speak on Sundays. It would be like mute, and I didn't drink for like a couple of months. Like I really just had no social life. Now I've started to put that in. I've been here half a year, so I'm like, woo! <laughs> like it's it gets better. Do you know what I mean? But um, yeah, they were kind of. It, it was hard to begin with, but I guess with time everything just just sinks in and you get you get you get used to it. Yeah. So um, obviously the show you've done it many times. Mm -hmm. Things can go wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, has there been a standout embarrassing moment that's happened on stage? I mean, singing in the monkey is probably one. <laughs> like, and how many times can I do it? Mm -hmm. Do you know once I did it once? Then I had some, like a thing about it, and then it happened again the same week, and then the week after, and I was like, oh my goodness, third time it wasn't funny anymore. Mm -hmm. First time, lol, second time, bit lol, third time, get it together. If you think about it too much, it probably makes Literally, it. and now I'm like, every now and again, I'm like, I like, I, I'm humming, yeah. when I'm doing my bow, I'm humming my note, yeah. so when I can get to the door, I've got the note in my head, because it's quite a long time for you to just come in yeah. with it, mm -hmm. and clearly I took it for granted that for five months I was doing it with ease, yeah. and then as soon as I did it wrong once it's just wild so that's been one thing that was just funny and stupid um i guess just just mixing up my lines forgetting it's, it's really hard jamie talks a lot he's got a lot of things to say yeah, yeah. and sometimes when you don't articulate and get it out it just turns into mush and then i'm i'm really quite bad i'm, not, I'm sure you've probably seen at corpse in sometimes so like i crack if i get a line wrong or something i make myself laugh i think i'm hysterical so i'm like and then I'm basically laughing at myself and then other people on stage are laughing at me, laughing at myself. It's happened times in one in my head and I'll be like, Come on, in! And I'm just like, hmm. I just have to take, I don't know, pretend it's like an emotional thing and I'm like, really powerful. all in my head, it's just hit by this power, you know? It's just stupid stuff like that that goes wrong, but you've got to be a pro and just try and just make sure the audience doesn't know that you're dying inside. Absolutely. Um, so, an important question. Mm -hmm. So, do you think the LGBT plus community are represented well in theatre and forms of media, TV, whatever? Well, obviously they are here, mm -hmm. um, and they are in you know a handful of shows. Of course, there's so much more to be done. We could do with more representation in all walks, and you know when it comes to representation with in disability, in colour, in you know all different all different types, there's always more to be had and always more to be done. However, I do think that we're getting better. I think that casting brackets are opening up more and people are being more inclusive, i.e. me being here, you know, not necessarily changing the story, but showing, you know, a queer kid of colour that you are, you know, you're being, you're visible, you know, mm -hmm. you you matter, you belong. Um, I always say, I just think, is mm -hmm. doing all right, it's not the best, but we could always do better. They can never be enough. Do you know what I mean? Definitely. So, more is more, I say. Absolutely. Exactly. Um, right, something uh, everyone wants to know at the moment after all the announcements yes. today. <laughs> Are you going to be involved in any way in the film? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I do not wish to comment. Oh. <laughs> so, let's just say I'm out here doing eight shows a week, I'm doing my damn thing. I'm sure the team, you know, have put, have put a little moment in there for your queen ladies in, just to let everyone know what's good. And I don't know, you'll have to go to the cinema we'll to find out. To go watch it. See. Who knows? <laughs> and that's that on that. <laughs> I love that. Um, so how does Jamie compare to other roles that you've played in theatre and TV? Um, Jamie compares in some ways. Um, I guess most notably would be sexuality-wise, but 
when it comes to characteristics, not really. Like when you look at like characters like Angel and um, Stephen from Bad Education, um, what else have I done? <laughs> I forget. Kiss me, Kate. What? Kiss me, Kate. Kiss me, Kate. Yeah, they're all so different. Like when it comes down to people say this a lot, which frustrates me. So I, I always try to speak on it. You know, oh, um, do you know you always find yourself playing gay characters and things like that. Like, oh, do you mind? Do you mind? And I'm like. Why would I? Mm. Why would I? Because if you think well, every gay person is the same person, then you need to be asking yourself questions while you're asking them questions. Yeah. Just because of their sexuality doesn't make them a, a particular type of person. Like, Jamie is so different to Stephen. Stephen is so different to Angel. Do you know that all these characters have their own moments and isms, and just because you see, like, a lipstick and a red heel and all that, there's, there's a lot more going on. Yeah. Like, Jamie's vulnerability is something that I've never really had to play before. And then, yeah, I think they, I think in some ways they are similar, and I put a lot of myself in them too, but um, in lots of ways, every time I do a character, it's kind of a new challenge and something fab. I mean, Kiss Me Kate. <laughs> the tash. The tash. The tash. Do you know what I mean? The, the hat, like, come on. This, it could have been further away. Seaweed, stuff like that as well. Um, but I think that's a great thing as an actor to try and keep everything just doing different bits and bobs yeah. and just letting people know that, you know, we're, if you can be, be versatile and switch it up. Absolutely. Um, right, in years to come, when you look back at your time as Jamie, will there be any standout moments or experiences that are more important to you than other things? <sighs> One thing I have to echo and say, and from everybody here in this building, like the support from you guys and the fans and everybody that we meet constantly is, is probably the most important thing to me because you see that it's really helping people's lives. Mm. So um, that's been one of the highlights of this, this project, knowing how much it means to, you know, especially the youth of today and how much it's helps change their lives, the amount of letters that I get, I'm like constantly trying to reply to as much like fan mail as possible, like I have to have a day that I set aside, because it's, it's beautiful. Um, that's been a real highlight for me because it means that your work is actually doing something for the greater good, and not just for me, do you know what I mean? This is great for me because I'm living my dream, I'm, you know, in a position where I've never been before, like my face is all over London, <laughs> like who even, who does that happen to, do you know what I mean? Like I still pinch myself and I want you guys to know that like it's I still really I don't take any of this for granted like I'm so appreciative of every second that I'm here and I'm still think I'm dreaming and I'm gonna wake up one day and they're like oh but um and then I guess standout stuff like performing at the Royal Albert Hall mm -hmm. like come on like, I was I was in the wings and I had a mic and I had my cute little outfit on and I just thought I'm about to go and sing to all these thousands of people like I don't do this I don't not know recording artists, yeah. this doesn't happen to me and it was just, you know, Beyonce's performing at menu. Like, do you know what I mean? I was like, this is wild, like, I'm about to go and just do this. So that was a really special moment. And I guess hopefully we'll, we'll, we'll perform at Western Live next week and we're doing Pride a couple of weeks after that. Um, do you know, just doing the outside of stuff as well and really connecting with everybody is, is also like highlight moments because obviously this is this is it, I'll never forget my opening night, but having to do different bits and bobs and, you know, I shot a campaign today, which you'll hear about soon, that, like, it's just like, how is this happening to me? Do you know what I mean? I wake up and I'm like, this this job has honestly changed my life forever, so, um, it's all just going to be one big bubble of a standout. I feel like there's just so many different things you get from the role. So and that's what John said yeah. as well, like, how that he feels like he's got every area of, like, work experience through this role. and like, For sure, like, after this I'm going to be like, what am I gonna do now? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I could actually retire and be happy, but I won't. <laughs> right, finally, uh, do you have anything you want to say uh, that you haven't said already to the fans uh, that have continued to support the show for, you know, since it's been here in the last end? Well, yeah, no, well, well, obviously, from what I just said, because I like to answer questions with other <laughs> questions and answers, but um, I just want to say thank you guys so much for the support that you've given me coming into the role. You guys, you know, Rightly so, we're standing John from the get-go, and it's quite scary to come in and be like, oh god, especially with all these polls, honeys, and all these things, and you're like, oh god, like, are they gonna want this cookie? Like, are they gonna be into it? Are they gonna ride with me? And you really have, and I really appreciate it, because it makes me feel, you know, welcome, even though, like, it's weird, because it's like, oh, well, but it's your world, you know what I mean, too? Um, and yeah, I've just, 
really enjoyed going along the journey with you. So if you want to come to stage, it's like, things got, like, you notice like the growth. And that's what's really cute, you know what I mean? From my first Shucky show to now that I'm just going out and just doing, doing my thing and feeling more relaxed in it. You've been there every step of the way, so I want to say thank you so much and still keep on coming. We've got another six months to wrap this up and then who knows what's going to be happening in the future, so, illy. <laughs> thank you for everything you thank do. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you guys. Double hug, double hug, double hug. Let's have a little photo moment. Yeah.